Come on. Battery must be getting dead. I have a million tuners and I <laughs> can never find them. Yeah, this one looks better. can't play a lot of songs with just these three notes, but... Damn. John, hi. Good to see you. I mentioned that we might start doing some... Uh, Music reading, I thought I'd teach you some notes, how to read notes a little bit. So that's what we're going to work on. Uh, oh, over here. Yeah, weird. It's, it's not on the left-hand side. Okay. Thanks, Holly. Let's see, I want this to go over there. Well, there it is now. It just showed up when I went to it. That's so weird. All right. So I just put in the Discord a uh, PDF of this sheet that I created last night for y'alls. <laughs> well, lots of projects. <laughs> yeah, but thank you, Bruce. Hey to y'all, y'all. <laughs> oh, we're y'alls. We're all y'alls. <laughs> I remember someone saying all y'alls. Every one of you. In other words, all of you. <laughs> all y'alls. Bob. Yeah, I probably won't do a video, a little short video, uh, saying that I've gone back down to one day a week. I didn't do that when I went to three from seven. <laughs> um, I figure uh, I'll, I'll make posts on Facebook. I'll make a post on the YouTube. I'll make posts on Discord. I think it's been clearly announced. Uh, I may even make a post on my Twitter. Um, that would make sense. Um, but, uh, yeah, the problem with posting, I would lose subscribers if I posted a little 30 second video saying that because people would be like, why did I get a notification for this? Unsubscribe. So I have to be cautious. Um, Hey Lena, just so you know, I saw your email about the PayPal, but I never saw the donation. It never showed up. And clearly you had my right PayPal account because the email came to the right email. And that's the same, it's the same email. So you might want to look into that. I doubt that PayPal is pretty good about it. If you have a wrong email, it's not, uh, uh, if that person doesn't exist. Um, because I know that it worked before because when I posted, uh, where, where did I post that? See, it's so weird. Now, when I click on certain, like the PDF thing disappeared. I don't, no, I don't want to create a channel. Oh, there, all of it is. I see now. Okay. Yeah, that's what I want to see. I don't want to see any of this. Um, Tom's text, text chat. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the right PayPal. Um. <laughs> Everybody's going through cold turkey here. Sorry about that. 
Um, yeah, in fact, the, the thing that I was talking about that I'm going to be busy doing, it's not that's not happening yet. Uh, it's going to slowly happen over the next, um, well, I'd say the next six to eight months. Um, but then just there's a ton of other stuff going on. Um, and you guys saw, some of you saw that video, the, the uh, Benny Main song, uh, Son of My Eyes video. Um, so I'm kind of trying to help them promote that because we'd love for that to be a summer hit. Um, Matt the Scott, <laughs> get you coffee. Well, Matt, if you're in Scotland, don't have coffee. You'll be up all night. Although I really envy my, my European friends that can have coffee in the middle of the, you know, for dinner. I can't do that. I can't, I can't even have Diet Coke with dinner. It's so frustrating. I have to have caffeine free, which nobody sells. So I have to get water or wine or something, but no caffeine for me. I have, really, I have 690 plus YouTube lessons, Bruce. Holy cow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bob, uh, projects are a good thing. They pay the bills. That's right. And when you buy a house in your 50s, you, for your first house in your 50s, <laughs> you, you're hyper aware. Diane, I'm, I'm well. I hope you're well, too. Hook. Hook in the house. Did I see it? Hook. Was it Hook that was going through withdrawals, too? Uh, let's see. Well, let me just do shout real quick. Okay, Dan, John, Bob, AJ, Lena. Holly, thank you, Holly. Yeah, it's weird, um, Holly. On the the on the sidebar of my Discord, it only listed like two or three of the things. I'm like, what's going on? So I clicked on Tom's Tom Straley's room, and it opened up everything. But it was weird because it looked like it was open. The little thing was I don't know. So they're all there now, but I didn't see they they went away. Uh, let's see, John Kinden, good to see you, Bruce. Thank you for being here. Uh, let's see. Oh, Bruce took the message down. Um, let's see. Ed, J Jack, Matthew, David Sillers in Scotland. Bob Schumann. Did I already say hi, Bob? Sorry, Bob. I'm saying hi to you a bunch of times here. Uh, Udayan, good to see you. Bruce, thank you for doing all the, um, hey, Paul, good to see you. So yeah, and now I I because it was there was copyrighted material in that video. I I don't think it would have happened if I hadn't put his video at the front and the back. Um, uh, you know, excerpt from uh, Benny's video at the front of the back. Um, I think it was my longest YouTube video aside from my live streams. Uh, it was almost thirty minutes. It was like 28, 29 minutes. Um, but it wasn't, it didn't take that long to edit it. And then I created some diagrams so you could see what I'm doing and things like that. Hey, Brett. Um, but uh, um, I couldn't, I couldn't monetize it. But tell me, did you, any of you see ads in it? Because I wouldn't mind if there were ads in it. I just apologize if they put like 10 of them in there. Um, because the record label has the right to advertise, which means that that some of uh, very small percentage of that money should come back to me. Uh, but hopefully it's promotion for the video or the song, uh, promotion for my channel, uh, promotion for my, uh, my business. So we'll see. Um, I may take it down at some point if it, you know, five years from now it's getting zero views. I, there'd be no reason to keep it up, but yeah. So we talked briefly about learning how to read music. So I created this little kind of, I tried to do some random things and there's, there's three elements. If you go to the PDF, the PDF is at the discord. Let me, uh, let me, uh, do pull up the discord and then pin it. Okay. Here's a link to join the discord. It's free. Um, it's a, it's a place where we all kind of gather more you all than me all, um, and uh, and continue discussing and sharing and talking and taking care of each other, and, and I really love that. Um, it should pin in a second here, and um, 
up there, I look, I have, there's a tab there called, um, to, uh, Tom's lesson PDFs and live stream something. What is it? Live stream lesson list. <laughs> so any diagrams that I put up, any things like this, those things or any of this stuff, that's all up there. Okay. So, um, if you're watching, go back and watching older videos, older live streams, you can pretty much get those. So we're only going to, we're going to do like, this is super basic. This is almost right out of Alfred and Alfred's basic guitar method, kind of right out of Mel Bay. It's basically the same kind of thing. Um, what I'm, there's three different things you're learning. Well, let's see. There's three notes, three rhythms and a rest. So seven different things you're learning. You're learning half notes, whole notes, quarter notes, and quarter note rests, plus where E, F, and G are on the first string. It's as simple as that. O, one, three. Yeah, that's right. Bruce is saying, if you do join up with us at the uh, Discord, try to use your um, YouTube name so we can make that, you know, Understanding. Otherwise, you'll be constantly answering the question, who are you again? <laughs> so, just for your benefit. And on Discord, I think you can have unlimited handles. So you can change your handle just for that, um, for that, uh, te that, that, uh, for the room, for our room, the peanut gallery or peanut power cord. I don't, peanut H power cord. I have no idea why it's called that. Dennis can answer that question, but <laughs> I don't know if he can change the name of it or not. But nobody would find it searching for it. But also, I put up in um, the uh, your own stuff thing. I put up a link so you can listen to some Apex Legends. So I do all the guitars and basses on Apex Legends. So you can take a sip now. In fact, on that one, I even played keyboards. On the one that uh, I think there's um, some Mellotron, and when the composer sent me the music, um, I sent him a track of Mellotron, and I just added a um, a comment. I said, "Hey, you know, you might want to use Mellotron because it would have been something they would have used back then." And he said, "Oh yeah, I already added your Mellotron." <laughs> he didn't replay it. He just he liked mine. He just put it in there, so it worked out. Scott Jacobs in appreciation. Good morning. So um, you'll notice that each, so I did everything in groups of, you know, kind of in pseudo in groups of four, not really. I mean, but I put a double bar at the end of every stave. Okay. And staves, those, these are, whoops, dang it. I'm a horrible weather, man. That's a stave. That's a stave. That's a stave. That's a stave. These are staffs, <laughs> staff or stave, but I, I don't know. Staff, stave. I, I, anyway. At the end, I put. You can treat that as a repeat if you want. So if you turn, if you if you get your phone out, oh, I don't know where my phone is. Oh, it's over there. If you get your phone out and you have your metronome going, and it's, it seems like it's darkened. And now it's probably too bright, but okay. Um. But if you um, uh, get your metronome out and you want to practice, just loop those four bar phrases, okay? Um, they can totally be done that way. So I'm trying to mix it up pretty quick. For the first three lines are just up and down, up and down, uh, E, F, G, F. Uh, then after that, I start to mix it up with rhythms. And although I, didn't, I never used a whole note anywhere, but I did use some half notes. Um, and then I start throwing in some rests. And, uh, and those, what you should do on a rest is go ahead and make sure nothing's happening there. So if you see... E, like in measure 39 down at the bottom, second line from the bottom, you see E, rest, E, rest. Go ahead and mute so nothing's ringing out. It, it's different sound. That should be different sounding than two E whole note, or half notes. Two E half notes would sound like this. Two, four. But that sounds like this. Two, four. And there may be a reason for uh, rest in that moment musically. There may be something else going on. Somebody may be playing this. And you may not want to hear. You may want to hear. 
you know, something like that. So, um, so really try to be pretty vigilant about that. Next week I'll do the B string and then the next week I'll do the E and the B string. Um, and I will try to upload these in advance so you can have them printed and ready to go. I'll try to get them up there uh, the night before. Um, but I didn't because I couldn't find the lesson PDF thing. So I tried to go, I had it ready last night and dang it, if I couldn't upload it because I couldn't find that. Now, Holly helped me out. So thank you, Holly. Uh, Alan Floyd is in the house now. Okay. All right, so if you have your guitar out, and the great thing about this, you could have an electric guitar, acoustic guitar, or um, a nylon guitar, really doesn't matter. Um, even if you had a mandolin, this would be true for the first string, so you're good. If you want to take your mandolin out, that would be true. If you're going to play a ukulele, this would be the second string. So, um, And then you'll notice at the top, I wrote out the names of the notes and the fingering or fret. In this case, it's the same thing. So if it says one, that means first finger, it's first fret. It says three, it means third finger, third fret. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, maybe I will use a click. Um, let's see. Click, 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 click. I have something called tempo. I don't know if I got it for free or I'm going to see how slow. Let's see how slow 80 is. Yeah, that's pretty slow. That should be good. So I'm at 80. I can't see that. There we go. Okay. Um, hopefully you can hear that. But, but I'll count regardless. And what we'll do is let's just do the top line. So we're going to have E. And the first finger on the first fret is F. And then G. Okay. And this is just to kind of start to learn the notes on the staff. Um, and you'll see that top space is E, the top line is F, and above the top line is G. Okay? Two, three, four. E, two, three, four. F, two, three, four. G, two, three, four. F, two, again, that's the same line. E, two, three, four. F, two, three, four. G. And then just hit E. Okay, so those are called whole notes. Whole notes are worth four beats. And you notice they don't have a, ste a stem on them, all right? Um, the the uh, When you put a stem on them, it's only worth two beats, and that's a half note, okay? So those are whole notes. That, uh, we often will call them, if it were a chord, like if this was... It would maybe be like a diamond shape, and we would call those footballs oftentimes. Yeah, just play footballs and, you know, it's, it just play F football. Assuming those were chord names instead of note names. Okay, so the next one is half notes, and those only get two beats. So it's going to be E, two, three, four. F, two, three, four. G, two, three, four. F, two, E. So that's what we're going to do. Here we go. One, two, three, four. E, two, three, four. F, two, three, four. G, two, three, four. F, two, E, repeat. E, two, E, four. F, two, F, four. G, two, G, four. F, two, E. Okay, now let's go ahead and just do the first two lines. This time we're not going to repeat them, but we'll just play each line once. And the reason is I want you to go, to experience going from whole notes to half notes. All right, so you can feel the the speed change of what you're playing with your right hand. It's largely your right hand that's changing at this moment because uh, uh, really not doing too much changing in each bar. You're staying on a note for each bar. Okay, so top line. We're going to read the top two lines right now. One, two, three, four. E two. Three four F two three four G 
two, three, four, F, two, three, four, E, two, E, four, F, two, F, four, G, two, G, four, F, two. There we go. Sorry. I started to think about something. <laughs> a squirrel. I thought about a squirrel. Okay. Now, the great thing about this is that we're learning, like I said, we're learning seven things. We're learning where E, F, and G are. That's three things. We're learning about quarter notes, half notes, and whole notes. And we're going to learn about quarter note rests. But the great thing is when we learn B, we won't need to learn. We already know the four, four of those things. Okay. We only have to learn where B, C, and D are. And um, so then, then I might bring in some, another rhythmic element. So I will try to, you know, teach you um, the notes, use some of the rhythmic elements that we've already learned, like today. Um, and then I will add maybe another rhythmic element or maybe dynamics or something. And then, and then like I said, probably the next lesson will be combining the B string and the E string. So we'll be doing some... <laughs> yeah, right? Holly is right. Uh, so we'll start being, we'll start picking across things. This is super duper basic, but again, I'm trying to bring in some elements and it gets harder as we go here, okay? So, uh, it, okay, the next line, we're just gonna read the third line. We're gonna do it twice. These are quarter notes. So you're gonna actually hit one of these on every click, okay? And so this, because the click is going at quarter notes, 80 quarter notes per minute. That's what each, 80 BPM is, 80 beats per minute. So let's just play E. One, two, three, four. One. And that's the first bar right there, bar number nine. And you notice I didn't write the letter name or the fret anymore. Now you're on your own, okay? So try to remember the top space is E, okay? And then the top line is F. So three, four, just play a bunch of Fs here, quarter notes. And if you want, you can go down, up, down, up. But I would probably reserve up strokes until we get to eighth notes. I mean, unless this was a, unless we were playing a really fast tempo. But 80 is not fast enough to justify up and down strokes, really. Okay, and then G, remember the top, above the top line is G. Two, three, four. And those are a bunch of G's, okay? And then you'll notice that bar bar uh, 12, the last bar in that line, there's two F's and two E's, okay? So you're gonna have to pay attention. It's not just gonna be F's across the board. So I'm trying to mix it up a little bit. It gets busier as we go. Okay, here we go. Uh, bar nine, and we're gonna play to bar 12 and then repeat it. Two, three, four. E, two, three, four. F, F. G, two, three, four, F, F, E, 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 two, three, four, F, two. Watch the music. Kind of move your eyes along with the music, even if you know it. Stop. Okay? It's really good to start looking at the music and kind of, you know, staring at it. And eventually what we're going to do is we're going to try to look ahead. Uh, you might be looking ahead one beat, two beats, and then eventually a bar or two bars ahead. Um, you'll have all this short-term memory that you'll use to uh, be able to read harder passages. Now, I've said this pretty much from the get-go of my lessons, uh, and reading music is one of those things that's kind of, um, shall we say, a lost art among guitar players. Every other instrumentalist learns how to read music, <laughs> except, well, maybe drummers. But even drummers have their own music notation that's written on music staff like this. Um, and in fact, some of the best readers I knew were, uh, were drummers because in college, the drummers all had to make piano their second. Uh, you know, I got to choose whatever I wanted to be my, my second instrument after guitar. But drummers, they had to have piano as their second, you know, percussion majors. Um, so, uh, but guitar players depend so much on tab or so many of them are just rock or, you know, just playing rock and roll and they don't need to read music. And I get that 100%. Um, so 
you might be you might struggle a little bit to try to find reasons to read music. Now, there's not generally tab written for classical guitar music, so if you you might take some of this newfound ability and migrate it over into playing some classical guitar pieces. Um, I you can get tab for classical pieces. That's not saying it doesn't exist. It's just not normal for the for the instrument. Same with jazz. Jazz typically does not have. I mean, when when somebody's doing an analysis of somebody's playing then oftentimes they will use tab. But if you go, if you were to do a real book gig, there's no tab in a real book gig. It's just, it's just the melody written in music like this and the chords and that's it. And you, you gig with that. Um, I did a video on that a while ago um, in my, uh, the business of making music. Um, and then, um, you know, the other thing is if you were to play with an orchestra or if you were to play, um, you know, big band would be technically jazz. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other scenarios where you might read music. But in our bluegrass stuff, you notice I did both music and tab. I just didn't do tab because music gives you the rhythm and tab really doesn't. Yeah, it's Bob's exactly right. How to stop a piano player from playing, take away his music. How to stop a guitar player from playing, put music in front of him. That's 100% true. Um, and uh, the, it's the opposite for me, though. I mean, I, 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 if you put music in front of me, I'll play louder because <laughs> I know what I'm doing now. Um, and just to give you, just just in this last week, and also music is one of those things. If you if you aspire, some of the younger players here, if you aspire to being do, doing session work or whatever, music's one of those things that uh, uh, will. Music reading is pretty required in studio work. There's a couple guys I know that can't read a lick of music. Uh, but they're mostly hired to play on pop and rock records. They're not hired to do movie scores or things like that. Uh, but you'll see, this is just this week. This is just this week's of music, okay? So, obviously, this was a very simple, short little bit. What was this from? I forget. But this is also very short. Um... Here's some chords. We're going to do that too. I'm going to show you how to read stacked chords. Not as hard as you think it is. You really start to see things. And this will also help you with your music theory. You can see this, a lot more notes all of a sudden, right? Another thing that you have to get really good at is reading rest. Now, I didn't, I didn't wait for this to happen. I just stopped the computer after I hit that chord, and then I started the computer here, and I hit this chord. <laughs> So it's not, yeah, when I'm working home alone, if I were sitting in a step session, this is really, really hard. This is actually, this, these three staves is actually really hard if you're in a session with an orchestra because you've got to count all those rest bars. There was a bit on Cheers a long time ago, like, well, Cheers is a long time ago, but one of the first season, maybe first or second season, where this guy walks in the bar and he sits down at the bar and he's doing this. And, and and coach hands him a beer and he drinks the beer and and then Diane's like what's he doing oh he's a percussionist for the the Boston Symphony he just walked over here to get a beer because he's in a long rest and he's you know he all he does is play the cymbals and so he's got a long rest and he's keeping and she's like oh wow that's so cool and she goes over and she starts counting out his change and when she she's like okay you know 16 17 18 and he's like Damn, he loses count. He has to run out of there and doesn't drink his beer. So it's pretty funny. But that's, yeah, those spaces can be really, really, really uh, stressful. <laughs> Especially if you've got like a bar of 5-8 in there. And a, bar. a good composer and usually a good, a good orchestra or copyist will put in like what, will put some notes in here and they'll be tiny notes, like miniature notes. And it'll say flute or whatever. And so, oh, when the flutes do this melody, you know you're that's the bar before you're supposed to play. So, um, but so a lot of that kind of stuff, a lot of rests, okay. And I, this is like I said, this is one week. This is just this week. Uh, I'm trying to find what's the hardest thing I did. I don't know. And this was on uh, some of this was guitar, some of this was lute, um, some of this was bazooki. Uh, Sam, I played bazooki on a couple games. Here's where, where I messed up and I forgot to delete the sustain pedal marks on the piano. See that? So I had to go back in the MIDI, delete the sustain pedal marks, and then it cleaned it up. 
because it, it says ped 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 everywhere <laughs> it's like i don't want to see that it it, it, it really mess i i hate it when i forget to check that but piano players are always playing the guitar part out and holding the pedal down and they're getting the sustain and so okay so now we're going to do the first three lines together okay we're gonna play <clears throat> and no repeats we're gonna go from the <clears throat> bar one to bar 12 um, and I'm going to put the click, I'm at 80, just so you know. Um, and we're going to play along together here. I love that everybody's playing together here. It's kind of fun. Two, three, four. E, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Three, two, four. F, two, three, four. E, two, three, four. F, two, three, four. G two three four F two E. Yeah, it, uh, Cheers is on the Peacock. It's also on Hulu. So if you have Hulu, um, Cheers is on that. Um, and you might find that bit on YouTube. I could probably I could look it up. Um, the uh, the funny thing is at the end, Diane says something like, "Musicians are so temperamental." <laughs> But, okay, so the next bar, bar the, the next stave, stave four, bar 13, we we're combining quarter notes and eighth notes. And I mix, I mean, quarter notes and half notes, okay? So let's play it rhythmically with hand claps first, okay? So we're, I'm going to put the click on, and we have two quarters and a half, a half and two quarters, two quarters and a half, a half and two quarters, okay? So these, at least there's some consistency here. I'm going to mix it up even more later. Four. One, two, three, one. Three, four, one, two, three. Okay, let's do it again. Bar 13. One, two, three, four. 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 Almost hard to hear the pattern at that speed, okay? Let me play it fast. So you can kind of hear a pattern at, at a fast tempo. Um, so what this is going to require is it's going to require... Oh, uh, Holly has a question. No. No, you don't need to mute. No, you do not need to mute before hitting the next note. Not at all. No. That first bar 13 would be played like that. One, two, three. And you notice in bar, bar 14, I didn't go to an F. I went to a G. So already I'm starting to mix it up a little bit. I mean, I tried to think about it when I was built making this. I didn't try to just draw, uh, I'll do the random, 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 random. No, no. I actually was trying to think about, okay, I got to mix it up in a very um, uh, thoughtful way. So, Okay. Okay, thank you, Two Broken Thumbs. That's awesome. And cheers. It wasn't, he was a cymbal player, okay? I couldn't remember if he was like kettle drums or cymbal or whatever. Funny. Okay, yeah, so guys, check that out later. <laughs> yeah. uh, I love that show. I watched it yesterday. In fact, the best, my favorite episode of that one, of, of Cheers, and it's one of my go-to shows if I can't find anything. You know how you can go, I've got like all the streaming services. I'll go through them and I'll go, I don't feel like watching any of this crap. I'll go, I'll just put cheers on in the background and work. <laughs> and that's and usually I don't get any work done because I'm laughing so hard. Because it just that show for some reason still cracks me up. Um, but the best episode, I'm, I'm I always watch through the whole series, right? Season one to season eleven. And I'm in season ten now, almost to the end of season ten. And it's um uh the episode with uh Emma Thompson, who wasn't really known in the U.S. as Nanny G, and it is the funniest episode. Oh my gosh, it is hilarious. So, and Emma Stone is great. I mean, Emma Stone, Emma Thompson, sorry. Emma Thompson's great in it. She's just great with a great American accent. Hey, Pepper, what's going on? Pepper, this is easy for Pepper, this stuff. Pepper can just, Pepper can just mute me and do something else. <laughs> okay, so now let's play, uh, Bar 13 through bar uh, 16, and we're going to repeat it, okay? Here, we're at, bar, we're at 80 beats per minute. Three, four. E, 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 G, 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 F, 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 E, 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 G, 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 F, F, F. 
Okay, let's do it again. Three, four. E, 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 G, 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 F, 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 F. Really start the music. Up to G, third fret. Okay, and if you go to the Discord, which I've, I've pinned at the top of this chat, um, you can download the PDF of this. So you can print this up and have it and practice it all you want. Um, uh, and uh, so let's try doing um, the third and fourth stave together. Okay, so 9 through 16. Let's do that. All right. So we're going to play a bunch of qu quarter notes. Wow, we've got a lot of people watching. This may be something. <laughs> I mean, the great thing about this is this is something I've kind of wanted to teach. I was going to do a series on this uh, video, but... Um, I just decided to do it here in the live stream, so I may, you know, make it more concise. Well, I would have to <laughs> make it more concise and repost at some point. Um, but uh, yeah, this is this is this is good. Okay, so um, ba -dum -bum -bum. all right, let's uh, let's do bar nine through sixteen. My gardeners just showed up, so hopefully it won't be too loud for you. One, two, three, four. F, four Gs. One, two, two Fs, two Es. And then next line. Let's do the whole thing again. Back to bar nine. Quarter note. A, E, E, E. Stay on E. Four. G. Two. Three. Four. Two. This is what a video you could go back and practice along with. I'm sorry there's going to be so much talking in between. Um, yeah, sight reading is good. Oh, and like I said, the great thing about the other great thing about sight reading is if you can pull up music, any music, and you can start playing something, people are like, Wait, you know how to read music? You can read piano music. Um, I don't think we'll ever get that far in these, this series where we'll, I'll be teaching you how to read two staves, <laughs> bass clef and, I'm sorry, bass clef and treble clef. And right now we're in treble clef. That's what that little uh, curly cue thing is at the beginning of the bar of the stave, okay? That's a treble clef. So guitar is a treble clef. Okay, bar 17, we'll just read to the end of, uh, we'll read to the end of, We'll just read to 20. So just that one line there. We're going to read that, okay? Um, without the metronome, let's play through it. Because, again, I'm mixing it up a little bit more now, okay? So bar 17, 2, 3, 4. E, E, F, F, G, G, F, F, E, F, 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 G, G, G. Now I think I kind of wrote this to go along with two lines, those two lines together, or maybe the next three, but it's fine. You can just practice this one. If you want to loop that, you can. Um, here's another thing. Resist the temptation to write the letter names under there, okay? So if you print this up, I did it already for you on the first two lines, but that's it. At this point, you should be reading the music, not reading letter names, okay? And there's a reason for that. One thing, there's there's a lot of E's I can play. There's a lot of E's I can play on the guitar. And so if you were to say, oh, play an E note, you would be like, oh, which one? You know, I can play this one. It's actually this one. <laughs> so you want to read those, those three. That one would be way below. This is at the bottom of the staff. This one's be way above this note. So you've got technically four, even five. Uh, if I play the harmonic right there, I've got five different octaves of E notes that I can play. Um, and t 5 times 12 is, what, 60? So that's almost all of a piano, range-wise. Eight Piano has 88 keys. Okay, I'm trying to keep my left hand really close here. All right, so we're going to do uh, bar 17 through 20. Just 
making sure nothing here. Holly, what did Holly say? Yeah, Sam's doing well. Sam was jumping up and down in the <laughs> in our, <laughs> Sam was jumping up and now see I have faces for most of these people here, which is funny. You know, it's like And John, yeah, we know now we know what you look like now too. <laughs> we got to go to work with John. So hey, Izzy Mambo's in the house. Okay, so I'm gonna sorry about the lawnmowers. Um, I'm gonna hit 80, three, four. We're gonna do uh, what did I? Where are we at? 17 through 20. Here's 17 to 20. We're gonna do it two times. Okay, so we're gonna repeat. Two, three, four. A single first day beginner here so I'm not too worried about going too fast I'm, you might be getting lost in music you can always tap your foot that's totally fine tapping your foot's good um, uh, but uh, I'm not really worried about picking too fast at this moment because I feel like most of you are already way beyond the skill level you need it's the reading that we're working on that's why I don't want you writing F E. so if you've already been doing that um, Let's see. I'm learning uh, Pink Floyd's Money Solo from Sheet Music. How do I learn to play count any song with variable note durations ties small triplets along? <laughs> That's a big question, John. Uh... Less than desirable visage. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm not one to talk. Um, uh, I'm not one to uh, ridicule anyone's visage. <laughs> oh, thanks, Lena. <laughs> Lena gave up on the whole PayPal thing. <laughs> so, all right. So let's uh, let's see. We did that twice already. Let's do line 21 to 24, okay? And then we're going to do 17 to 24. So here's slowly 21. Again, so, certain notes. But when you print this up, do not write the letter names on there, okay? Promise me you won't do that because that doesn't help you. You want to be reading these notes. That's what we're reading, okay? You can be – I want you to know that that's G, and I want you to know that that's F, and I want you to know that's C. That's important to know, okay? It's, it's going to be fascinating because I really think that a lot of – um, uh, a lot of um, uh, people, you, it's a lot easier to learn music theory when you can see the notes, okay? So, um, so you'll start to see things like thirds and fourths make a lot, thirds make total sense when you start to see them in music. Lena could testify to that. Okay, um, bar 21, slowly, without the metronome, starts on a G note, one G and then three Fs. Okay, I must have eaten too fast. <laughs> Gas bubbles. Three, four. G, F, 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 E, 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 G, G, E, E, G, G, F, F. Okay? Let's do that again. Three, four. G, F, 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 E, 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 G, G, E, E, G, G. And this might be too small. If anyone's watching me on the on their phone, this won't work, obviously. Another skill is you've got a lot of a full page of notes. So keeping your eye on the right line is a, is a skill, okay? And so, you know, tracking and really focusing really highlights the the, the need for the skill of not having to look at your hands, right? Now, here, I'm going to give you if, you, if this is super boring to you and you're like, oh, I've got this time. Why are you talking? Baby, this is baby talk for me. I get it. Go play. Instead of playing in open position, play the EF here. Play the EF up here. Or if you want, you can play the EFG up here, okay? You can be practicing your positional reading. 
you may be going, oh, I know this really well. I've, I studied that when I was a kid. Yeah, but can you play up here? Can you play EFG up here? This is, in fact, this E note was the one that was always, like, always had a hard time finding, like, where's the E? Oh, there it is, you know, or F. But that E always was perplexing, E flat. Okay, so. So we're going to try uh, reading 17 through 24 with a click. I don't know if you'll be able to hear this, but three, one, two, three, 17. Keep your eyes on the ball over there. Next line. Let's do it again. Back up to 17 at the end of this. 17. E. Look down. Very good. Okay. Some of you are texting and not paying attention. All right. So uh, one of the things that I noticed that in that in that instance right there is that you don't really have a whole lot of time to go from the last beat of bar 20 to the first beat of bar 21, which is on the next line down. So you really almost have to look ahead. You don't know what, when you're playing that G, you don't know what's coming next. But if you can look at that and go, I got three Gs in a row. What do I have down there? Oh, another G. Okay. That's the kind of thing you're going to need to start doing as you start to read music. You need to start looking ahead. Uh, and, and it's just super duper short term memory kind of stuff. Okay. All right. Let's do bar 25 through 28. All right. And then we're going to try 17 through 28. We're going to really, it's, now I'm really starting to mix it up. But rhythmically, at a glance, you can see it's nothing but quarter notes. So you know that rhythmically, we don't have to really think about that at all. It's going to be da, 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 a note on every beat, okay? Hopefully, 80 BPM is not too fast, but if you've got a metronome, you can go to 50. It doesn't really matter, okay? So, um, <laughs> Zach, Zach Davis. Oh, the video? Oh, weird. That may be on your end, Asla, because I've seen I'm seeing green down here. I got very frustrated last Wednesday when it we end, I ended up deleting that video. So we actually went from Monday to the next Wednesday before we had another lesson. So a lot of you are going through withdrawals. All right, so let's see. Hey Zach, did you see my video on the making of uh, "Sun in My Eyes" song? You should check that out. It's my most recent video. You can just go to my YouTube channel and check it out. It's kind of, that video was kind of designed for guys like you <laughs> that want to do more pop records. Okay, so uh, what did I say we're going to do? We're going to do bar 25 to 28, okay? Uh, slowly, I'll, I'll try to go slower. Here we go. We're going to start, F, it's really mixing it up now. F. G, E, F, F, E, G, E, G, F, F, G, E, F, G, G. So we're down here. We're right, shoot, we're right there, that line right there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm really bad at pointing. Golly, this is so hard. Uh, you're laughing at me, but it's like, I, I dare you, I, I just dare you to do this and try it. <laughs> At least my guitar's not upside down. So, okay. Uh, what, what, cause remember when I would hold up music and it would be backwards or something? Was that right? We, cause my, I don't remember. It might, the early videos were like that or something. I forget somewhere I did that. It was like all wrong. All right. So again, bar 25, here we go. Slowly without the metronome. Three, Four. Look at the notes. You've only got three of them. G, F, F, G. Okay, so let's try this with the metronome. 
One, two, three, four. Two times. Again, repeat. Okay, so I, again, just so you know, notice, I put double bar lines at the end of every stave, just so you can think of them as a, like a finishing, or you can think of it as a loop area, that you can, something you can loop or treat as a repeat. Um, you can repeat each line. Each line is kind of autonomous in that way and, can, and teaches you something new. <clears throat> but, um, the, uh, um, but now what we're going to do is I'm, we're going to try to do bar 17 through 25. I'm going to slow down a little bit. I'll go down to 75 BPM. Yeah. Yeah, actually, John. Yeah, this is probably a start of 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 getting to um, getting to that place where you can. Re but but talking about triplets and ties and all that stuff, we're not we're not going to get there. I'm going to bring in ties though. I'll bring in ties pretty soon, uh, probably three, four, third or fourth lesson. Because again, I'm trying to bring in a new element um, to. Uh, so you're learning something easy. You learn. Oh, I got these three notes. Okay, but let's learn different rhythms. And now we're going we're gonna to start talking about um, rest here in a second. But right now I want to try, and I, I slowed it down to 75 BPM. I want to try bars 17 through 28. So it's a 12-bar phrase. It's a 12-bar blues. <laughs> if it were the 12... Actually, kind of a cool blues in E. <laughs> I kind of think it, I lost my nail. I don't know if you noticed in that video. <laughs> now you're gonna to have to go back and watch the uh, Benny Main video. I was showing the, <laughs> I was playing the uh, lap steel in that video, and I sheared off on the top string of the lap steel. I sheared off my my ring finger nail, and I'm like, dang it. And but you I, you don't even see me react. I just kind of grab it and pull it and throw it on the floor. <laughs> Because I'm like, I just didn't want to stop shooting the video. I'm like, yeah. So I don't have a I don't have a third fingernail right now, which really affects my pop uh, writing. Like, if I don't have a nail on there, I'm not going to be like any pop writing I do the the next week or two will not be finger. It won't be you know. I can't make that I can't make that melody note pop with my ring finger. So, um, so uh, that was um, uh, so I'll probably everything I'll be writing this week will be will be with you know. We'll be with a pick. So we'll see what happens. Um, but anyway. All right. Yeah, John, you probably probably better John John Y in, in Louisville to uh, just to try to play it, listening to it. You learn probably more than that. You're just gonna get frustrated trying to read the music at this point. Music for music note music notation of already played music can be really really unnecessarily complex. Unnecessarily complex. So I tab is the same way. It's it, you know, it's trying to it's trying to insert in some kind of numeric value vibe. I mean, I remember seeing tabs of Steve Ray Vaughan playing, and it was so freaking complex. I went, "There's no way I could play like that." And then I realized, "Oh wait, no, he's just he's just hitting all the strings." <laughs> It's like, but you tab that out and it looks like a complete mess. Nothing but X's with all those dead notes. It's like he's a, he's hitting an E string and everything else dead. 
and that, he did that all the time. And they would write that out. I'm like, why would you write that out? It's just like unnecessarily complex. Okay, so I slow down to 75. We're at bar 17. We're going to go to bar 28. Let's try it. And the plumber's, I mean, the garden's gone, so that makes it easier. Two, three, four. Maybe start looking a little ahead if you can, so nothing surprises you. Three, four. Next line. If this is easy, play it up higher. Uh, and then 25. We're gonna do it all again. Up to 17 again. E, F, G, messed up okay now John I'm gonna give you a, a little tip for everybody one thing you can do if you want now this is not musical okay this is not in the notation but if you want to accent one of every bar play it a little louder or you can even play it a lot louder if you want it will help you keep track of the four beats okay and we're playing in four four so everything you can see at the very top of the of the very very top of the chart we have four four written up there that's four quarter notes per measure four times one-fourth equals four-fourths or one. One is in the reference to one whole measure. Okay, um, so if you want to, you could go and make a facial expression of surprise every time. <laughs> if you want to do that too. <laughs> okay, but if you want to, you can accent beat one and if that helps you keep track of where you are. Like I said, ultimately that's not musical. Um, we, uh, <laughs> my sister just Lee just said nice manicure because I sent her the video and I think you, you saw. Oops. Um, <laughs> she must be watching the live stream. That's funny because I just mentioned it here, and then she she goes over the text. My sister, my sister's text chat. And we said that. So, okay. Now we're at bar twenty nine, and we're mixing up uh, more. We're we're going to do more quarter notes and half notes for one line. Okay. Um, and what I may do is uh, we can practice twenty five through thirty two or something. But let's do twenty nine. <clears throat> through uh, 32. Yeah, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Um, and I'm doing this live stream. I used to do it when COVID first hit and everything shut down and my YouTube video revenue went to down the drain, uh, which is where it is again for some reason. Um, but the uh, uh, I was teaching seven days a week. I did seven days. I did... 62 days in a row from like March 17th or something last year. Because uh, what else were we going to do? We're all stuck indoors. So, um, and then I went to three days a week back then. And I just started this week. I'm down to one day a week. I'm uh, just working a lot, which is a good thing. And then the revenue from YouTube has been really kind of on the lame side. So it's hard for me to justify taking what it, it's more than six hours a week to do two, to do three, two hour live streams. <laughs> They always end up being two hours. Uh, we're already at an hour now. Um, but uh, I uh, um, uh, just will do maybe 30 to thirty to 60 minutes of prep for each one, too, sometimes. Uh, definitely when we were doing the bluegrass stuff, I was doing a lot of prep work. I'd spend hours sometimes prepping, writing and prepping and doing charts and everything. So 
Um, anyway, okay, so we're looking at bar 29 just for the next, those four bars. Uh, to the end of the line there, 32, it's G, G, E, 4, F, F, G, G, F, 3, E, G, F, E, 4. Okay, so you'll notice now I've even moved where the half note is. Okay? Um, one, of the, one of the things that I do, and John, this may help you. Thank you so much for the tip, John. I really appreciate it. One of the things that I do, John, when, I'm in, when I come across very complex rhythm that's like 16th notes, um, and I don't really need to do it anymore, but let me see if I can find something, an example. Uh, oh, well, you know what? Um, yesterday's, so I was playing on this thing yesterday. I don't know if you can see this, but look at the bottom line there. See that? ba da 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 So that's, that's a pretty... You know, that can be a kind of a complex rhythm right there, that very bottom line there. All right. See those 16th notes with the eighth note and everything. OK, if you if I double the value of those, they become. Instead of 16th notes and eighth notes, it becomes 16th or eighth notes and quarter notes. If I double them again, they become quarter notes and half notes. All right. So a figure like that, if I just double the value of everything, it's kind of the same thing as slowing it or stretching it. If I double the value of everything, it becomes much easier to read. So if I might like 29, it's. But if I were to play that one, each bar was a beat, it would be. You know, it, so that that figure there, twenty nine, which looks very, very, very easy as quarter notes and half notes and three, obviously just three notes. Um, if I, if that were written with sixteenth notes, it was too sick. You know. It would be it would look very complex um, and it would be because it was so because it would be fast uh, but if you double the value and even sometimes double the value again you can get a very complex pass passage to look very much like what I've written at 29 okay so let's practice 29 to 32 without um, the metronome let's go slower I think probably <laughs> I'll probably find out after we turn on the metronome I actually was going faster but we'll see okay here we go 29 three four Four. Make it loud. Two. Three. Four. 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 Two. And right now I'm pretty much using all downstrokes. I was basically going 75. Here we go. Let's do two times through at 75. Three, four. Oh, sorry, sorry. I jumped down a lot. My sister sent me. Okay, my bad. <laughs> Squirrel! <laughs> Three, four. See how that's kind of weird, right? Again, 20, uh, bar 30. Da, da, three. But that's a very common rhythm, all right? The other thing we can do is we can clap it. Here we go. Let's clap this rhythm. Just bar 29 through 32. Four, ba, ba, ba. Three, four, 
She's asking. She's asking me if I'm getting Botox. I'm like, no, I'm not getting Botox. She, I think she's just bummed because she's my little sister and, and guys age more gracefully than women. I should tell her to join the live stream. All right, so John, okay, great idea to get that feel of the music's movement first and then play it to speed later. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're probably already doing that in some ways. Uh, but again, John, I would, reading the music, I, I mean, I think, and this is actually <laughs> the opposite of this entire lesson, <laughs> this reading basics thing. Uh, but I think you would learn more as a guitar player. And again, I'm always putting... I'm always, um, uh, I'm always putting um, the average age of my live stream audience as my age and a beginner, okay, or intermediate at best. So that's what I'm always thinking when I'm talking, okay. So if I were talking to an 18 year old kid or a 17 year old kid that wanted to learn to be a professional guitar player or whatever, maybe I would say, yeah, you want to try to see if you can read that music or whatever. Um, but I think you'd be better served to just try to figure it out with your ear, what he's doing, and then maybe tab it out yourself. I wouldn't even necessarily do the music. It could get too complex at this point. You'd just be frustrated. Although I did that when I, again, when I was 15, 16, 17 years old, I was tabbing out Charlie Parker stuff. Um, I was tabbing out Charlie Parker stuff and George Benson licks and anything I, you know, and then eventually Steve Lukather solos from Toto, things like that. So I was tabbing it out, not tabbing it out. Sorry. I was actually writing it out in music notation. Um, and so that was very, very good for helping me to read music. Writing music will help you read music and reading music will help you write music. It's, they're very, very uh, joined at the hip as it were. Okay. They're Siamese twins. Okay. Um, let's do bar 25 through 32, okay? Mix it up a little bit. And then we're going to move on to the rests. <coughs> My sister's going to join in a little bit, so. Um, so I'm going to put the click 75, and we're going to have to jump our eye down from bar 28 to bar. But the note, if you want, you can look at the last note of bar 28 and the first note of bar 29 and see the, the same note. That's a little work-ahead thing you can do if you're going to have a... a a tough moment in a chart that you're reading. Okay, you can go. Oh, per, you know, you start to learn to predict the things that you're going to mess up on. You go. Okay, where am I going to mess up? Oh, right there. Okay, so that should help. Okay, here we go. So it's a G note. Both those are G notes. One, one, two, three, four, twenty-five. Again, let's do it again. F. Okay. Now we're going to talk about rest. Now, rest is that thing that kind of looks like the number three. All right. That's a quarter note rest. Half note rest and whole notes are rest. It, it, not reading them is not a problem. Writing, uh, writing them is a problem. I always forget which is which when I'm writing. Uh, when I'm reading it, it's obvious which is which because you've probably got notes in the bar if it's a half note and you have no notes in the bar if it's whole note. Like when I was showing you all those charts, I had those thousand bars of rest it had this half whole note so uh, we'll talk about that when we get to half note and whole note rest i don't know if i'll do that on the b string so when we do the b string we're going to have 
three new notes, but we'll have all these ry rhythmic tools that we can use. So we won't have to learn anything there, but I might introduce one new thing, maybe the half note rest, maybe, uh, maybe tied notes. Tied note might be something that I could do uh, that would be a good, uh, very, very simple thing to kind of work into our, our playing, okay? We are also, I was on a call yesterday and noticed that the male colleague had dyed his hair. Uh, see, Kathy, Catherine, Kathy, uh, it never looks good for a guy to dye his hair. I'm sorry if there's any of you guys there with your hair dyed. And I know it's tough because if you've been dyeing your hair for a long time and you decide to stop doing it, uh, I've never dyed my hair. This is, <laughs> this is it. This is what it looks like. Uh, I'm pretty salt and peppery. I mean, I've still got a lot of dark hair, which is good. Um, I don't know what it would look like if I grew it out long again. It's been a long time since I had long hair. And whenever I had long hair, I never had gray in it. It wasn't until I started cutting it shorter. Um, I think if I, if I didn't keep a beard, you might, I might look younger, but I think I look older without a beard. Um, I look more like a woman without a beard. So I look like an old woman without a beard. So I, I, I kind of keep the beard because it just the, the growth, because I think it looks better. So I am vain. We are all vain, like like who said that, Bruce. Um, but uh, but women coloring their hair, I it looks great. I've got friends that you know that they would be completely gray if they didn't color their hair. But I think their hair it doesn't look weird on a on a guy. It always looks fake. It's like you can always tell with a guy. And I don't know if it's because guys are not very good at it and women are much better. Uh, but generally, I women coloring their hair. I, that's totally. I'm totally fine with that. You know, and I think, hey, <laughs> Lee. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm totally fine with color. And, you know, the thing is, you know, <laughs> women marry men for, for who they could become. And men marry women hoping they never change. <laughs> so, you know, the whole dying there, it just looks better on women, in my opinion. Okay, so this, so now Holly... We were talking about, and my sister Lee is here. Hi, Lee. I miss you. Good to see you, or good good for you to see me. <laughs> uh, she's on a lunch break right now. You're at home, though, right? You're working from home still. She's on the East Coast. So, um, so Holly, remember when you said, do I need to rest in between? It's, no, absolutely not. You do not need to mute the string between notes. No. Those can all ring out against each other. That first, you know, bar number nine. No, you wouldn't want to go. No, not necessary. Um, I wouldn't say. If there was a dot over the note, that would mean staccato. So that would mean. Or like a. That would be pizzicato. If there was a dot over the note, but there's no dot, you can totally let them ring, okay? Ah, but we're going to get rid of that now because we have a rest. So when there's a rest, we don't want anything to ring into that, okay? So let's do bar 33, and it's going to be three E notes, three F notes, three G notes, and an F, G, or sorry, G, F, E. Um. <laughs> yeah, my fans, my flock, <laughs> my disciples. Yeah, it looks weird, Kathy. Kathy, it just doesn't look good when the guy cut. So if there are any guys there, don't don't. If you're thinking of coloring your hair, don't do it. Let it go gray. It looks. I mean, look at Michael McDonald. Look at Steve Martin. Look at. I mean, it just looks. It just looks good. You know, what's the guy from uh, Mad Men? He's he's younger than me, and he's been gray. My dad turned gray in his thirties. So. Um, Yeah, see, I don't have this. I kind of have a little bit here, Lee, but I, most of mine's on the side. Temple, I have Temple Gray, so I don't really care. We, my mom, our mom didn't didn't go gray until she started getting cancer treatment, and then her, her hair turned pretty white at that point. But prior to that, she didn't. She wouldn't really color in her hair. Um, okay, so bar thirty three. Let's do that. Here we go. Uh, I'll, we'll do it with. We're gonna repeat it. We're gonna repeat thirty three through thirty six. Um, we're going to do it uh, multiple times with the click, okay? Because it's pretty simple. 
It's just we have to remember to mute beat four is where the rest is. Okay, three, four. Again. Good. So, um, I'm assuming good. Uh, and again, you want to be kind of looking ahead. Now, the next bar. Um, I put a rest on beat one in the first bar, beat one and three in the second bar, beat two and four in the fourth bar, and then there's no rest in the, I mean, sorry, in the third bar, and then no rest in the fourth bar. This sounds like this. I'm going to play it with a click. So you can hear it. Three, four, rest. Let it ring. Rest. 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 Okay. Well, why don't you play with me? See if you can do that. It's a little weird there. Those middle two bars are kind of weird because the, the rest moving and you're only playing an E note. That's why I kept that simple because I wanted you to really more hear the, the space and practice your rests. Um, then worry about what to do with the left hand. Okay, so I kept it just the same note for two bars, but let's play it. Two, three, four, rest. 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 Let it ring. Rest. 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 Okay, good. So again, the PDF is up in the Discord. You download it, print it up, practice it. You can practice reading the whole thing down if you want, from front to back. Uh, we got one more line to do, um, but you could do that, or you can practice. Like what? One thing you might want to do is maybe play each, each, play it all the way down, but play each line twice. You know, one, so play first. Uh, bar one through four twice, then bar five through eight twice, and then bar through nine through, you know, 12 twice and so on and so forth, um, and play it all the way down. That way you can make it into a pretty long um, exercise. The other thing you can do is, is just play it down or practice a cer certain section with a metronome setting at a lower setting and then start speeding up the metronome as you get it, okay? Uh, the main thing you want to do is, I'm yeah, I'm using, I'm muting, I'm muting the note with my pick or left hand, either one, it doesn't matter. There's no rule for that. Um, but it, it should sound different than a half note. See, if I were to play that, see bar nine, or bar 13 and bar 33 sound almost identical, except one, the bar 13, the, the the E note, the third E note rings. In bar 33, the E note stops, okay? And musically, there could be a real good reason for that. Especially as a singer or a horn player, rests are real important of anybody that's using their breath to play their instrument, okay? Um, and so you will sound, you will sound more like a, um, a horn player if, uh, Sorry. Um, over there. You'll sound more like a horn player if you put a little more rests in your playing. You'll sound more like a vocalist if you put rests in your playing. If uh, if you just keep um, playing, uh, you know, letting notes ring all the time, then you, you it's not going to have that kind of breathy quality. So, all right. Uh, let's see. All right, so we got one more line to do. Um, 
Yeah, uh, Mamba, it doesn't really matter how you mute, as long as you mute. <laughs> Jeff doesn't have enough hair. That's right, Jeff, you don't. Yeah, and that's the other thing, too. Toupees, I don't know. I've I probably seen some that I didn't know they were toupees. I don't know. I'm sure there's some really good ones out there. Um, and my friend Rick Bennett totally uh, punked me one time. We were uh, we played tennis, and um, it was back when when I was still living in Indiana. We played just played tennis at his place because he had indoor courts. Or, well, we played on the outdoor courts. I remember because we played and then we went swimming. And so he said, "Bring your swimsuit. We'll go swimming after we play tennis." So we're, we're playing tennis. We, we go swimming, we get in the pool, and keep in mind, Rick's a big rock star in Indiana. Like, he's got this beautiful mane. He looks like a lion. I mean, he looked great, you know, total rock star. And uh, <laughs> we're sitting there, we're kind of in the pool, we got it kind of arms up on the side. He goes, hey, Tom, I just, I really want to share something with you. Just, I haven't told anyone this. And I'm like, oh, what's he going to tell me <laughs> that I have to keep, you know, confidential, you know? And he goes... I just want to let you know that I'm a, you've heard of the hair club for men. And I went, yeah, I'd heard their ads or seen their ads on TV. And he goes, I'm a member. And I went, really? And he goes, he took his hair and, and went like this and it made it look like it was a toupee. <laughs> and I'm like, going, no way. <laughs> he totally had me faked out. Oh, Rick was like, oh my gosh, I miss him so much. He was such a great guy. He was so much fun. Lee, you've met her many times, but uh, yeah, I, I uh, uh, yeah, Rick Bennett was a great guitar player and a good good friend back in Indiana. We had uh, some great stories, uh, and he was just he was just punky me. <laughs> but yeah, I've never I don't know that I mean that's the thing about toupees. I don't normally recognize them, so I guess there are probably some really good ones out there. I don't ever go that guy's wearing a tube on TV. I do see that every now and then, like in the seventies big thing it was a big thing for guys to wear toupees because uh you know you didn't want to look old or something before your time but but i think michael jordan saved balding guys uh because he just went oh i'm going bald okay fine i'll just shave it all <laughs> just shave it all off and if i was going bald that's what i would do i would probably just shave it all off because i think it looks better and then you can't even tell how old you are um so all the ladies loved rick i, I did uh, i don't want to know lee <laughs> <laughs> but that's true <laughs> i would go over there and every time i went over to play tennis and we played tennis every day like monday through friday we played every day in the summer generally we played at my house because i had my neighbors had an outdoor court we played at and in the winter he had an indoor court we play over there so um but we played a lot unless it was raining and we, we wouldn't play but um i would go over to his place anytime I mean, there'd be a different girl leaving every morning <laughs> It's like, oh my gosh, Rick. But then he got married and he was he was with his wife until he passed away. She's great. Kay is awesome. All right, so we got one more line of music to do. And again, the PDF is at the Discord. Discord link is here to, uh, at the top of the chat. Um, it's a free to join. Doesn't cost anything. Use your, try. you can create multiple usernames at Discord. So use your, um, uh, yeah, Uncle Lou just shaved it off. Exactly. It was so smart. It looks great. Um, but the, uh, so, um, use, if you can, when you go over to the Discord, use your YouTube handle as your Discord name. Makes it easier for us. Otherwise, you're going to get tired of answering the question, who are you again? <laughs> who am I talking to? So that it's on you if you don't. Okay. Here, I'm going to play bar 41 to the end uh, by myself slowly. Okay. So you can hear it. Okay. One. Two, three, four, rest. Two, rest. 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 Now, this one is probably the most complex four bars that we've played so far. Combination of rest and half notes, you know, kind of, it makes you have to think about how long a note is a, the duration of a note, okay? I'm going to do it again. Three, four. Rest. Two, three, four, one, two, rest, four, rest, two, three, rest. I didn't rest very good there. Do you end? Rest. Oh, 
Boy, and you know what's also weird about that is it turned me around and I thought I was off a beat, and I was. So that's kind of weird. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. Three, four, before we do it together. Okay, this one's gonna be a challenge, I can tell. I'm sorry, I gotta get my fingers more in the... Here, okay, two, three, four, rest. Rest, rest. Oh no, I got off, see that? See what I'm talking about? It's not easy, okay, hold on. One, two, three, four, run. I messed up again, but you get the idea. It's not easy, even for me, because um, combining those rests and those hell notes, um, where you're you're letting notes ring out and versus letting notes um, uh, to, to versus just stopping them cold, is is uh, is is a different skill set. So definitely good. That last line is probably the hardest of the whole thing, which actually I'm glad because I I made it progressive, <laughs> like my lenses. All right, speaking of getting old, um, let's see, every, hey everyone, Tom, Tom, great idea to have the basics I need to reinforce this. As, yeah, and again, if this is way too easy for you, then just put it up and instead of playing E, F, G um, on the open position, play it here at second, uh, second string, start practice reading those E, F, G, or you can even go up here. Um, I find that this, this area of the neck is, tends to be my weakest area for sight reading. So I would, you know, recommend trying to move it around. We're not going to do that. We're going to stay in open position for a while. Then we'll, we'll start to move and do some, maybe, I don't know how far we're going to get. I may just teach you all the notes on the open position. Once we get to the low E string, we'll decide where to go from there. Uh, but as soon as we have three strings, I may even do dyads. I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, dyads would be two note chords. D, Y, A, D. All right. So what else is going on? Uh, let me go. <laughs> Ask me anything. I'll go full screen for now. Uh, I, we can go for another half hour, and then I've got to probably start getting to work. <clears throat> In fact, i got to do some studying. What do I got? Make sure. Oh, oh cool. Okay, I've got a DocuSign thing here. So, review doc. Okay, so I'm going to do this docu sign, but not now. I'll do it after we're done. That's another thing is when you're starting to get busier, like do more professional work, you get more documents to file. So, what's going on? See, uh, story time, story time. I already told you one Rick Benick story. Let's see, can I think of another Rick Benick story? Well, I remember. Um, uh, Rick. Um, Rick, um, uh, invited me to go along with them on a little tour with his band Roadmaster and, uh, Roadmaster, like I said, was really big in the, I don't know. I want, I don't, wouldn't want to say the tri-state area. Cause I'm not even sure what that means. Um, they were pretty big in, well, they're huge in Indiana. Um, in fact, the bass player ended up quitting and, uh, right around the time I moved to California and he ended up joining uh, John Mellencamp's band. So he did his whole career there. May, he may still be with John Mellencamp. Um, Toby Myers was the bass player. So, but I, back when I was hanging out with him, it was the heyday. It was the main band. It was uh, Mac, Mac, uh, uh, Mac, 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 Mac,
Bobby Johns on drums, and Michael Reed or Bones. Everybody called him Bones for some reason. They were all tall. It was a very tall band. <laughs> they were all six two. So, you know, uh, although Ricky was probably six, probably the same height as me. But Bones and Toby were both really tall. I remember that. And then uh, Rick Bannock on guitar, um, and yeah, Toby Myers. Um, and so I remember going on the bus with them up to like Lafayette and do, to a couple shows. And I was, you know, 18, 19 years old. So I wasn't old enough to go into the clubs. Yep. Toby. Um, and, uh, and I, yeah, I hung out with Toby a little bit, but Rick was really my friend. Rick and I became good friends. Um, and I, I just really, really liked him a lot, but he brought me, and there was a girl that I really liked, and we dated a little bit. Her name was Ozma, and he was, she was, she knew Rick, but in fact, she's the one, she's who introduced me to all of them, now that I think about it. Um, oh, is it buffering? Really? Looks good here. Uh, but if I'm just telling the story, it doesn't really matter. But um, yeah, I remember, no, because I met Ozma first. I met Ozma, I was 18 years old. Uh, and I went to the mall and I went to the record store and I saw her and she looked like Farrah Fawcett. And I was like, and so I asked her out. <laughs> she was 27 and we went out <laughs> and she introduced me like really good music, like Brian Eno and stuff like that. My, Lee has always had really good taste in music, my sister, um, you know, and I, I was really a jazz snob at that point. So she... So Ozma kind of broke me out of that mold a little bit by introducing me to some some different. I remember I bought three albums that day. <laughs> so she's probably just trying to. She's probably on commission. But we ended up dating for a while, and I, and, and she moved back. She moved to uh, California, and I saw her in California. And um, we weren't dating then, but um, she was living with a guy out here, and I saw her. I saw her quite a bit because he ended up taking guitar lessons. She would call herself. She would. Osmo would call herself a universal joint, uh, which sounds like a drug thing, but it's not. She would introduce two people and leave both of their lives, and they would stay friends forever. And that kind of happened like with three different people with Osmo introduced me to that I'm still friends with today. <laughs> it's like, what? Well, Rick's gone. Rick passed away uh, from leukemia a couple of years ago. So um, see you, Stan. Take care. God bless you, man. Um, but I remember going on the uh, tour bus and um, hanging out with all these musicians. And there was, a, at the time, cocaine was a big thing, and so was uh, weed. So there was a lot of weed and cocaine going on, a lot of drinking. And I wasn't partaking in any of it. I was being a good Christian boy. and But I still liked hanging out with them. And, and Ozma <laughs> wanted, always wanted me to talk about Jesus. She goes, I love it when you talk about Jesus. So I'm on this tour bus with a bunch of stoned rockers talking about Jesus. And it's funny because because uh, uh, Rick Rick became a Christian much later in life and he calls me one time and he says, Hey, I wanna let you I wanna share something with you. And he started he started sharing Jesus with me, you know, like trying to evangelize with me. And I said, dude, I was so I was so depressed that he didn't know I was a Christian all those years that we hung out, you know. Because you're a Christian? <laughs> and I went, Yeah, what made you think I wasn't? But it was just one of those things. It was pretty funny. So, um, but he, uh, yeah, he, he, we, we, you know, it was st we still got in a little bit of trouble, but, but just, I was just like this. It, it, it was very, very much like the movie, uh, almost famous. I was a lot like that kid in almost famous, you know, the, what's her name, uh, was the Ozma character and, uh, the rock stars were roadmaster. And I was just tagging along on the bus and, and just kind of, you know, I was pretty darn innocent for an 18, 19 year old. So, um, but okay. See you, Catherine. But it was, they were, man, they had their set down. They were a really solid band. Um, they, uh, uh, I, you know, consequently I saw them multiple times. They would still sneak me in, even though I technically couldn't be in there. Uh, they even had backstage pass things that sometimes I could wear and I could pretend like I was working or something. Sometimes I would tech for, it seems like there was a couple times I tech for Rick, you know, handed him guitars, things like that. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, he played through Marshall, full Marshall stack. Uh, plus he had pedals and I taught him how to tap. 
So he didn't really know about that Eddie Van Halen tapping thing. And I showed that to him. And so he started to incorporate that in the show. And I was always, hey, cool. I showed him that, you know. Um, back when it was first like a new thing, he uh, it was like, everybody's like, whoa, Rick's, whoa, look at that. Look what Rick can do. And I'm like, yeah, I showed him that. <laughs> it was pretty fun. So, uh, yeah, I, I remember going going to one of their shows when I first moved to California and I went to see them in Indianapolis and at, at the club and I had only been here for eight months and I already had like LA had already rubbed off on me I already had a look <laughs> you know in Indiana you don't really have a look but in uh, in California you kind of develop a look oh Ozma totally looked like Stevie Nicks which is also hot. <laughs> And she, and she was short. She was like five feet tall. And she just had that long, crazy blonde hair, you know, going everywhere. Yeah, she passed away too. Ozma did. In fact, it was so funny because I hadn't thought about her in years. I tried not to think about her for years, you know. And uh, we were, we were, go we, Beth and I were looking through some old stuff, uh, some old, like, we were. I found a stack of letters that we'd written to each other, stuff like that. I had this box of, you know, memorabilia, and I ran across a photo of Ozma and Beth. I don't think had ever seen Ozma, and I'd said, "Well, this is Ozma. This is a girl I dated, like, kind of dated. I mean, we were just more friends than anything." She she introduced me to sushi. She you know, first time I ever had sushi was with her. She did, she lived with a guy, and he he took guitar lessons from me, and. I would go there and he would, I would drive to his house in Hollywood and the, he would give me $10 for the lesson and uh, they would take me to dinner and they probably would spend like 40 bucks on me for dinner because we'd go to a, we'd always go to a really nice restaurant. And I mean, it was just so fun. It was so cool, you know, to go to Hollywood and be eating all these fancy restaurants. And, um, uh, uh, and so uh, I showed a picture of Osmond. I said, I wonder. I wonder what happened. So, I, you know, Beth is sitting there and I Google Ozma Bot and she died the day before. I hadn't thought about her in years. Find her picture. I, 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 uh, the, I Google her name and um, Le Legacy came up and it was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> she just passed away. And I don't, I, you know, I don't remember her being sick or anything, but she died of cancer because I, you know, like again, we hadn't stayed in touch. So, yeah, um, I did not know John Hyatt personally. What's crazy, I'll tell you something about John Hyatt, is he graduated from Broad Ripple High School, and in his class was Jane Pauley, the Today Show host, John Hyatt, and David Letterman. They all three were in the same graduating class at um, Broad Ripple High School, which is where all the, you know, like the clubs that we used to go to in Indianapolis were. So yeah, kind of weird, Lee, huh? Like I hadn't thought about her in years. And so it was, it was cool. Legacy. I, so it was cool because on Legacy, I was able to see um, all these pictures of her through the years because people were posting pictures and memories and stuff. And I'm like, you know, I, there were people that posted pictures before I knew I was, because I met her when she was 27. Um, she actually <laughs> lived she, she was a real hippie chick. Like, she was about the quintessential hippie chick. So, like, when I met her in 1979, she was 27. So, that means she was born in 52. So, when the 70, 60s, late 60s was going, she was probably in junior high, high school, early high school. Uh, but throughout the 70s, she was kind of the hippie girl. And she lived in California a lot. And she actually, fascinating girl, she lived... Um, she was kind of probably just a groupie, but she lived with Keith Moon in Malibu for a while, the drummer for The Who. And when um, John Lennon and Yoko broke up for a little bit and John came to California with his girlfriend, May, they, uh, they stayed with Keith Moon. So Ozma was living with John Lennon and said he was miserable. He was the most unhappy person because he wasn't with who he's supposed to be with, and that was Yoko. And he ended up going back to Yoko. It's interesting because I read, I've read some books about John Lennon. Talked about that period. I don't mention Ozma anywhere, but, <laughs> um, but she was a witness for a first-person witness of that that kind of scene. 
So, um, uh, um, yeah, John Hyatt's one of my favorite songwriters, by the way. And he, you know, very, very few people can say that Bob Dylan has covered their songs, but his, he, he, uh, he had songs that were covered by Bob Dylan. I mean, you got one of the greatest songwriters of all time doing someone else's, doing your song. You know, you're a good songwriter when. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, yeah, so, so yeah, Osmo was a, was an interesting thing. <laughs> Ultimately, the funny thing was the reason she knew all these rockers, um, and part of the reason why she knew Rick and the Roadmaster crew was because she was providing them with drugs, which I had no idea. I saw her as this, like, kind of hippie, cute, um, Innocent, really. I, I saw her as pretty innocent, ultimately, in some ways, and, uh, and I didn't know she was actually running running weed from Hawaii to California and Indiana. <laughs> she was like, she would be this before. I guess they had dogs that could sniff it out, but she was. They just didn't expect her to have it. So she was because, she, or she would be able to talk her way out of it, or wink her way out of it, or whatever. But apparently, and she never got arrested for it. But she was like <laughs> a drug runner. I think Rick told me that later. I was like, "You're kidding!" He goes, "No, that, that's how we, that's how we all came to know her." I'm just like, "Oh my gosh!" So she was awesome though, and she she was really into reading. She she was, um, and she was also kind of like the original, um, uh, the Renaissance fair girl kind of thing. She was really into that kind of thing. Um, really into Harlequins, which I hate Harlequins. So it freaked me out when I went over to her place and she had all these Harlequins around. I'm like, Ugh. I mean, they're almost as bad as clowns as far as I'm concerned. Just I, I, talk about spooky. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, I, I really, I am, you know, Rick was a huge influence on my guitar playing. Um, and I think a lot of, I, I think a lot of the reason why I never drank and did drugs was because I saw what it was doing to Rick. Uh, <laughs> and if he'd gone on a binge the night before I knew I was going to beat him at tennis. <laughs> so I think part of the reason I never did drugs is because I wanted to beat Rick at tennis the next day. Cause I would show up at his place at 11 and sometimes, and we had a standing, <coughs> a standing appointment every day at 11 when he was in town. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, either he would come to my house or I'd go to his. And, uh, <laughs> like I said, sometimes I was dragging him out of bed, you know, practically. He'd get out of bed and be like, oh, okay. You know, he'd make some coffee and the girl would leave, whoever it was. And, you know, <laughs> it's just like, oh my gosh. So, yeah, you didn't know that <laughs> Osmo was a drug runner. <laughs> yeah, I didn't at the time. I had no idea. So, yeah, I dated some interesting girls, that's to say the least. Yeah, Broad Ripple is still kind of that hipster place. It's actually a really, really cool area. Um, I think the Vogue is still there. The patio is long gone. We had the patio's old phone number. Um, and I played at the patio a few times, but we had the patio's old phone number. And for years, we would get calls at 3 in the morning. Is Harry there? We actually, my mom had the patio's phone number actually taped to the wall by the phone because, <laughs> because, uh, we got so many calls from them. They go, no, here's their new number. I'm like, <laughs> why would you give us? I don't even know why we didn't change our number, but I wonder if I Google that number now, if somebody has it, you know, because I had it on my mom. I, it was cool because I had it on my mom's um, cell phone so that people could call it and they would call her. Uh, oh, funny. It says, Lee, it says Steve Bone. <laughs> it's like, nope. So he must have. Oh, I remember when Steve was my stepbrother was living with my mom for a while. And uh, boy, did, he, did that tick off my mom. He was just like. Uh, funny. Yeah, that that was that wasn't a good arrangement, but he he needed a place. He sold his house in Indiana and needed a place to stay when he was in town visiting his mother. So, 
Who, oh, Steve Barry. Um, Steve Barry, are you from Indiana or Indianapolis? Because, yeah, no, you would have mentioned this. Because Tim Barry played, I think Tim Barry played drums for um, Roadmaster for a while. If you if you heard me mention Roadmaster, you would have said that. So if you're related to Tim Barry. But, and Tim Barry, I think, uh, <laughs> Lee, no comment. <laughs> Yeah. No, I know, like, I know my sisters smoked weed because I could smell it, but I never, they never asked me to join them. <laughs> so I remember going to, um, I've told this story before, but John Dinwiddie, who was a huge influence on my plane also, and dated my sister for like a minute. I think he actually broke up with his eventual wife um, and then dated Gwen for like one date or something like that. I think, I think that's how. Lee, I think that's how Gwen met, met David Holmes was through through John Dinwiddie, if I'm not mistaken. But um, John um, uh, John in, in, asked me to come to a jam session, so I would. My mom would take me to Rocky Ripple, which was uh, the, the the dark the uh, the unsafe side of uh, Broad Ripple. And uh, dropped me off at this, <laughs> basically, was probably what would, we would call now a trap house. But <laughs> it was uh, uh, just a jam session, and we jammed, and I brought my Les Paul. In fact, my Les Paul was John Dinwiddie's old Les Paul, which I don't have anymore, sadly. Um, I've seen him I've seen him now. You can see the, the one I had for like 3500 bucks. I think I sold it for $300. Um, but uh, it was a fretless wonder, and I... I think I traded it for, uh, I think I traded it for, what did I trade it for? A GNL something, which I don't have either. Um, anyway, the, um, the, the Les Paul, um, so I go to this jam session and we jam and I'm like by far the youngest person there. And, uh, John, you know, and we're jamming in this, Pretty small room, part probably why I had <laughs> hearing loss. Um, and I, I've told you this before. They had on the wall we were facing was, I don't know if it was wallpaper. It wasn't a painting, but it was literally from corner to corner. My recollection was corner to corner a wallpaper that was the audience of, of um, Woodstock. So you're jamming, and it looks like you're playing for this giant 200,000-person crowd. Uh, maybe it was just a big poster or something. I don't remember. My, my vague memory of it all, uh, probably because everyone was smoking weed, and I'm a little hazy on it. <laughs> but I wasn't smoking weed. But that was the funny thing is, at, you know, we take a break, and we all sit down on the floor in a circle, and they, if they got the roach clip out, and they're handing this joint from person to person. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to be a good Christian boy, and I, I take the joint and I just hand it to the next person, and they didn't say anything. They weren't like, "Oh, come on, man, it'll make you cool," you know. They weren't like they didn't pressure me. They were like, "Oh, cool, more for me, basically." And and I, you know, I, I even think John may have said something to him like, "Hey, guys, be cool. He's only 15. Don't do, you know, don't do anything." So, um, but it was, uh, yeah, I went over there a few times and jammed, and they were, I think they were blown away that is I was as good as I was I mean I was they were John was definitely better than me at the time um, John's a great guitar player he has a great feel and a great vibe he ultimately ended up taking my place in the band that I played in just before I moved to California so hey Gibbs vintage sorry we're, I'm just telling stories now we the lessons over when <laughs> we did uh, we did this. So if you go to the Discord, you can get get this uh, this file here. You can you can download that. But um, so we're just we're just talking now till the top of the hour. Um, yeah, I don't see <laughs> I don't see my nephew here. <clears throat> I sent an email. I haven't. Um, 
Let's see what else is going on. Yeah, hey, hey, uh, Jude, Gib Jude Gibson, Jude Gibbs Vintage. Uh, yeah, you look new. I'm not seeing your handle before, but you're welcome. Sorry, we're not doing a lesson right now. Like I said, we've been going since nine this morning, so in California time. Um, but I'm going to be taking off here in a second, so I haven't even been paying attention to the audience size. Oh, yeah, we're dropping off. What did we peak at? 40, 41. No, we got up to 44. That's not bad. 33 likes. That's not bad. Thanks for the coin there. John, John Weig and Lena gave me some, some financial love because I'm, I'm poor talking about how the, the stupid Amazon revenues dropped like a rock. I mean, not Amazon revenue. The YouTube res revenues dropped like a rock. I don't know what. I'm, well, it's, it's seven tips for older beginners is now starting to fall. I mean, I would get a lot of views on that, but it's not anymore. So I don't really have anything that's um, taking its place. Um, that has uh, has gotten as many views as that. So um, I'm not sure, you know, it's like trying to trying to get a, a successful video on YouTube is like trying to catch lightning in a bottle. And I've caught I've caught it once, but I haven't I've not really caught it twice. Um, if I go to uh, my content, I've to, I do this all the time. But if I go to that and I sort by views, number one is seven tips for older beginners, 2.8 million views, which is great. And then five songs with only two chords. And I, I thought, oh, cool. That one took off right away. And I thought, I need to do another one of those. This one has 577,000. The second one that I did for it only has like 38,000 or something crazy like that. It's like, what the heck? Uh, let's see. And maybe, yeah, it's not even starting to climb up. And I even got a card for it in that video. I mean, gosh, it's not even 20,000 views. What the heck? So, you know, a video to, to be worth my time, I spend on a video, um, has to have at least 100,000 views. So I've got videos, you know, like I said, this is a perfect example. When Michael Jackson sold 43 million copies of Thriller, that allowed Epic to sign a lot of bands, okay? So when I have 2.8 million views of a video on YouTube that allows me that justifies me making a lot more videos. Um, so that's kind of the beauty of it is that a, a lot of these videos that I have that are, um, and you can sort my videos by views if you want to go through them and go, Oh, these are the most, well, that makes sense. Okay. A lot of open tuning ones do really well. Um, the bluegrass jam track has done really well, which is really funny. I need to do more of those. Somebody asked if I had had one in F I should do one in F that would be interesting, but, um, I did one in D, and it's not doing well that well. But the the one twenty one's do, doing well. Which was sooner? Uh, what's the date? Can I see the date on it? Um, I mean, what's the? Oh, this is lifetime. So this one, I've made $55 off of this one in its lifetime, which is how long? 534 days. So the other one, that's the lesser of the two. The other one, which is a 100 beats per minute one, um, in its lifetime, February 18th. So I'm not even sure which is, you know, it spiked for some reason right here, man. I made $4 in one day on that video. <laughs> but for the most part, it averages 80 cents, 70 cents, 60 cents, 50 cents, whatever a day. But that's fine. That's an annuity, right? If I average 50 cents a day, that's $15 a month of a video that I posted uh, over three years ago. That's, you know, hey, that's working, working for it. And actually, you can see, I can see the in the analytics, which is a great thing about YouTube. They, they give you great analytics. Um, if I click on views since uploaded, it's just, it spiked a lot the first day I had it up, which is weird, but that's not unusual for a video. Hardly anything. And then it got up and then 
during COVID, it started peaking and it's it's kind of stayed up. I should do, let's see, I did a bluegrass jam and I need to put a uh, link. I should do A. A is more common than G. So I think maybe that will be my next video. I'll do a, a bluegrass jam and A at 100 beats per minute. And that way, uh, um, so let's see, I did, let me, let me go search across my channel, see how the, because I did one in, um, Bluegrass D. Yeah, see, that one only has 800 views. So what I need to do, if I haven't, is I'll, I need to put in a card on the, um, I need to put a card on the, the really popular one for the D jam. So, and then I'll do an A one. Maybe I'll do that today. All right. Anyway, I'm talking inside baseball stuff, huh? <laughs> Sorry, it's kind of boring. <laughs> Maybe I should wear lip gloss. <laughs> Lee. My sister is funny. Funny in a great way. I love my sister. Um, Tal. Tal's here. Yeah, so so my lesson schedule now, I'm just doing Wednesdays for now. I may sneak on every now and then. Um, I should I should probably do like more jams. Maybe Sunday I'll, Alex and I will show up with a jam thing. So keep the keep the notifications on. Um, in fact, in fact, in some ways, if you had the notifications off because you didn't want to be bugged by all my live streams, you're only going to get bugged once a week now by live stream stuff. So <laughs> you're worried. You're gonna... Quick break. <laughs> you're worried. Tom's going to send me a nasty gram. Uh oh, I don't want that. You're gonna, you're, you're worried. Your boss is going to send. Uh, do you, hey, John, do you, you have a guitar at the office? I forget. I, I didn't see. Oh, uh, action. Sorry. Uh, let's see. I should wear lip gloss. I mean, you never know. I should wear guy liner too. <laughs> Sham is in the house. So anyway, lots of stories today. So you asked for stories and I gave you a, a ton of them. Um, I, uh, um, and then so what we're going to do is we're going to continue this series that we started. Uh, we're going to do the B string um, and we're going to learn three notes on the B string. Um, and then, you know, we're going to work our way through probably all six strings and then we'll start going through and doing accidentals. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be formulating this as we go. I, ultimately, what do I always tell you? I, I'm, uh, I, I believe, so if you want to learn something, create your own exercise. If you've got a song that you're working on, whether it be a Pink Floyd song or a, a classical piece or a jazz Charlie Parker thing or whatever, and you come up across a phrase or something that's very, very difficult, and this probably applies to all professions, but if you come across something that's very, very difficult, create an exercise, you know, create, invent, a ver you know, do variations on it and all this. So that when you get to it, that part, you won't, you don't mess it up anymore. Right. I've said that before many times. Um, and what you're doing and essentially is what you're doing is you're creating original content. And you can always do something with that later. If you create a theme and variations on a Bach piece that you are trying to work on or a Charlie Parker solo that you're trying to, to figure out. You, you've just created some potential content that you can turn into, you know, a song or something like that that you can market down the road. You never know. So, you know, I might kind of go with this thing and just go, look, here, I've just created this, this book. And I've toyed with the idea of going to Etsy and uploading these PDFs so people can download them. Um, I've toyed with that idea. Uh, we'll, um, we'll see if I end up doing that. Um, but uh, at this point, um, I'm not planning on it. Uh, do I know a tuning D, A, E, A, C sharp, E? No. That's like, that's like open G with a drop C. So essentially, sounds cool. Sounds cool. I'm going to do, I'm going to do it with a capo. I'm not going to tune up.
So I'm doing, so now I'm in open G, which is, open G, which is uh, D, G, D, G, B, D, okay. I mean, that's what I'm in right now. Kind of what Keith Richards does, right? Richard's tuning, although he usually takes off the bottom string. So then, what uh, Steve is suggesting is uh, taking that down. So, but now I'm in, I'm in, what I would, I guess I could call this uh, open G over C, <laughs> is what you might call that. And then if I capo here, right? Now I have D, A, E, A, C sharp, E, which I don't have a ring finger right now. I mean, I don't have a ring finger nail, so I really don't need it. It makes it really nice to play the four chord. You get that nice bass. Almost makes more sense. Yeah, so now I'm playing now that now I'm in that tuning, which is D A E A C sharp E. So yeah, that's nice. So there's the A chord basically to the D chord. Christian playing bass? Is he? Did he actually? You said it, you bought him a bass for, and then it, it was because he's left-handed. You bought him a left-handed bass, and it, it was broken, or the neck was jacked up, or something. Did you ever get that squared away? I feel bad because I, I I forgot. I think I sent you the link to buy like a bass at like a, a I think you got him a, a P bass, a J bass. I think maybe a J bass. Anyway, yeah, that's kind of a nice tuning. I, yeah, I like it too. Although I, I I'd be fine with it in G. Makes for a nice e, uh, C chord. Oh, good. And, and the bass thing got squared away. Um, is he taking bass lessons from uh, Tony? Is Tony able to teach bass at all? So many great songs to learn on bass. I mean, bass is such a fun instrument too, because you can play with a pick or your fingers, and you get it's easy to get in a band. Oh, good. I'm so glad he got it replaced. Okay. Um, you, you know, so easy to find a band because bands are always looking for bass players. <laughs> so. I mean, he could even, if it, depending on where he goes to college, he could even make some money. I know you were talking about taking him uh, Squire 70s Summers. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I know you were talking about him going to maybe California, California College, but I think you're keeping him in state. Am I wrong? Uh, yeah, that's a really cool skit. Tuning. I may have to do a video on this tuning. So cool. 
that's awesome. Yeah, I know that. I know that um, Cal Poly uh, San Luis Obispo was on the list. Uh, such a uh, would have been awesome to have him. I mean, it's not. It's three hours away. But if he had car, if he had a car, he could come down here for Thanksgiving and stuff like that. Um, and it's it's a beautiful campus and it's very very good. Actually, they're big. Probably their one of their best degrees is architectural engineering, which is um, a really good degree to to look to have. So, anyway, anywho, <laughs> Lee and I can talk anytime. <laughs> Sounds like a movie track. It kind of does. Yeah, I like that too. I, I I may have to wait till my nail grows before I can do. Uh, um, uh, oh, I'm getting a question about my, uh, Matt is asking me about uh, Persian Alvarez or a guild. Um, both are I, Alvarez's and guilds are both pretty good instruments. Um, back in the day, Alvarez's were kind of the poor man's Martin. I remember back in the '70s, people were getting Alvarez because they couldn't afford Martins. Um, Yamahas tend to be a little bit more on the cheaper side, but I, I've been surprised by some Yamahas. Guilds are always, especially '70s guilds, are magical. Um, uh, Everybody was playing a guild 12 string in the 70s until Taylor came along and blew everybody out of the water. The best 12 string out there is a Taylor. Um, Taylor starts with their necks. Um, and I know we're not talking about 12 strings, but Taylor starts with a neck and the neck has to be really good, playable. If a guitar is not playable, and 12 strings are hard anyway, if a guitar is not playable, you're not going to want to pick it up. And um, so as far as for, for years, for good 10 years guild maybe 15 years guild 12 strings were the ones that everybody had and i'm talking about like all the session guys here in la they all had a guild 12 string uh now they've all probably migrated over to a, a taylor 12 string just because it's so much easier to play um someone suggested that tuning um as a 12 string sound on a six string guitar um I, you can take uh, you can take you can get a set of 12 strings, uh, a 12 string set. In fact, I can give you a link for this here. Um, just basically get Elixir 12 string set from Amazon. Um, and you can take the high set and put it on a guitar that you're using. This is like a backup acoustic or a cheap acoustic or a parlor acoustic or something. Um, and you can turn it into a high strung guitar. I've done videos on that. So you can look up high strung guitar. And it then what you do is if you double a six string normal six string which that's the other half of the 12 string set you can put it on a normal six string guitar and then take the high strings off and put it or take out of the pack and so every other string goes to a different guitar okay and um let's see let me find this uh, uh okay Um, yeah, any of these are fine. I'll grab, I'll grab this one, text. Oops. Oh my goodness. Copy. There we go. Okay. So you can take a set like this, a 12 string set. Um, you can get it at Amazon, um, and you can split it into two different guitars and take a, a guitar. If you have a, like a, a cheap acoustic or something, you know, it, I, some people say they're worried about, I wouldn't do it to a really good, one of my best instruments, make it high strung, but basically the top two strings will be the same as they normally were, but the bottom four strings will be up an octave. I have an electric tune that way. Um, I have an acoustic tune that way too, but it's packed away. But this one is the one that my daughter, Emma, did all the artwork on which is really cool. And it's just, a, this was like an $80, $80 um, Epiphone that I got at Guitar Center used. And of course that too. But you can, you know, seventh chord sound. Seventh chords sound amazing. Um, uh, sound amazing on high strung. So that's what you you, you end up getting these. 
um, type voicings on piano, they're really easy. If you sit on a piano, you create a cluster. Those are impossible on guitar, unless you have my cluster guitar. Um, but the, um, uh, I gotta clean my office, it's such a mess. Uh, but the high strung guitar, I have an electric one and an acoustic one. It's just, it's really magical. You can create these really tight voicing seventh chords that you couldn't naturally do. So, um, we got a new Taylor a couple of years ago, I think a two, 224. I don't know 224. I know 200 series with a cutaway. It is critical to always keep better guitars in humid environment. Um, I guess I, I just ordered a sound hole humidifier. Um, we're, Oh, I'm down to 31. It was 49% yesterday. Isn't that funny? Um, so I have a humidifier in my office. You know, uh, okay, I'm sad to say I'm not, I, I, I've got so many guitars, it's hard to keep them all humidified. Uh, I have humidifiers in them, but then they end up getting dried out because I forget to check them. It's like I need an assistant to do that kind of stuff. Um, so I probably have guitars that are going to die before their time. Um, and in my scenario, it's like, well, I'll just buy another guitar. Because <laughs> so, it's what I do for a living. If it, uh, you know, it's, it, they're just tools to me. Uh, but you take care of your tools, but at the same time, I'm just like too busy to do that. And it's like, I could take care of my tools or I could take my wife out to dinner and I'd rather do the latter. So, um, I can always buy more tools. So yeah, she, she, Emma, Emma is a great, very good artist. She does really cool stuff. So anyway, so I will see you all soon. Uh, well, next Wednesday, it, you know, uh, keep the notifications on if you want to be notified if I get, jump on for any reason. Um, I might jump on to do a jam with Alex or something. I don't know. We, we need to do an electric jam, but it's a little bit difficult in here. But we can try. I think we can actually make it happen. So I will talk to you later. God bless you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, John and 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 uh, um, and Lena, thank you for the for the coinage. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, humidifier. I just kind of aim it away from the guitars. I gotta. I'm gonna put more. I'm gonna put water in my humidifier because we're gonna. It's gonna be hot today and the next few days here in LA. It's gonna be in the 80s and 90s. So I got. I gotta make sure we're humidified. So I can kind of feel it in my throat. My throat's kind of scratchy. So that means we're getting drier. So anyway, I'll see you all later. Bye, Lee. If you're still there, I love you, and I love all the rest of you too. Yeah. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Bye.